used to call a certain kind of conversation, the 400-year lament. I was sitting in my office at 5050 Young Street, that was where we were at the time, and members of the black community would come in and pound on my desk, and they said, Even they have oppressed us for 400 years. What are you going to do about it? And I would say, yes, they have oppressed us. And that's the other thing. I quickly joined the group so they knew I was this. They have oppressed us for 400 years. And I have been here four months. So, so, so I, I can use all the help I can get from you. And that actually helped me a lot because every time they came in 400 years of men, it would get, cause me to be stronger within myself and to know that I had to go forward. And despite what sounded like unbelievable critique, it actually helped me. Yeah. And so that's one story. The other story so is about well-known activists in this community who has passed on, so I guess I can speak freely of that person. He <laughs> said to me, when he came to the district about a matter regarding the student, he said, he looked at me, it was my second day on the job, he said, I will not deal with you because when people like you get into places like those, you forget where you come from. Again, history of oppression is helpful. I looked him straight in the eye and said, you are right in general terms, because it is true, that is how institutions work. They capture people from marginalized populations, bring them inside the organization, and then you have to fix all of it for things they have not looked at for years. Yeah. So I acknowledge, you know, gender, you know, like women have to do everything, people, black people have to do everything that hasn't been addressed. And questions and so on. So I, so I, so I took the, I said, in general, you're right. And, and, I, and just a strategy, I've never used the word but if I can help it. So I said, and if we want that situation to be different, we need to work together. So I accepted the generalization that he was making about people not, I didn't do that particularly, I mean, good heavens, I was there just two days, so I hardly had the time to completely mess it up. <laughs> However, he said, so he said, and I said, and if we want the pattern to be broken, if we want this to be different, you have to help me. And he looked me up and down, and he says, all right, we'll give it a try. And he became a very strong advocate. So I say that there are ways, and a sense of history helps us understand the pain that people feel. And when they lay it on us, when they call Dr. Augustine and say I've been locked up, in a, in, maybe it's the first person who would take the call, even, even though you couldn't get him out. But I think that that sense helps to embrace the energy. And the last piece has to do with when you are in push against the wall, having taken that stand, sometimes those people come to your rescue. I remember one time, and I'll be brief, but so many stories come to mind. There was a time when North York Board of Education was bringing in employment equity and addressing the fact of black teachers' absence in the system. And for some reason, the Toronto Sun ran, a, um, you know those things that you have on the subway, the, the, the um, neon lights where they tell the story, they tell the news. And the, the night after the board meeting, the Toronto Sun had a thing saying, North York's race relations supervisor fires all white people and replaces them with black people. And of course, can you look at this small woman from Antigua thinking that she could do this? Of course, it was totally erroneous. But you know what happened? The number of people from the black community that found themselves up at 50-50 young street to say, you're all right, you're all right, what are they doing to you? So I just wanted to, you know, because yeah. it, was, it was not pretty. Because of course it wasn't true, you know, but if it's, if it's going around on the subway, how do I get home? Okay, so my point is this. Very true. That we need to remember that sometimes people from our community push against us, but sometimes they hold our hands. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. We need to say a few reminiscences from the old days. Well said, well said. Thank you for that. And I'm glad you got home safely. I don't think there's much else to be said. But I, I want to back up for just a second. You asked the question, how do we disrupt ourselves? And it brings me to three questions. Um, we spent a lot of time this morning talking about black boys. And Dr. Davis you know, brought us back at some point to what is happening to our black girls as well. Because in as much as we talk about what's happening to black boys in terms of criminalization, prison pipelines, all of that, one of the things that we're also seeing is the mental health toll that is taking on black women. Mm -hmm. the, the, this mythology that we have to be strong or that we are strong, that you know we are, we fit into one of these categories and we have to be these people and what does this mean that when we are responsible for boys, we're responsible for ourselves, we're responsible for changing the system and for society, and where does that leave us? And the number of black girls in care who are seeking support, mental health supports, suicide, um, cutting, things of that nature because of some of the things that we are facing. Concerns and systems 